In an earlier session, we discussed about the mathematical objects that appear in Newton's second law of motion. In today's session, we are going to discuss about the concept of mass. We saw that force causes an acceleration for a given particle. So, as you see it here, the acceleration is proportional to the force applied on the particle. For example, same amount of force may produce different amount of accelerations for different objects. Therefore, we can consider the ratio of the magnitude of the applied force and the resultant acceleration of a body to call it a mass or to be more precisely to call it a inertial mass. Clearly, the inertial mass is a measure of heaviness to move. In other words, if you are given a bigger object, same amount of force will produce less acceleration. Let us denote the inertial mass of an object as m superscript i. Let us now recall the Coulomb's law. If you have two charged particles, q1 and q2, as you see it in this diagram, the position vector of these two charged particles are given by R1 and R2. Then the Coulomb's law says that the electrostatic force between these two charges is given by 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught times Q1 times Q2 over R square times the R cap, the unit vector along the vector R. Let us also consider these two charged particles have mass m1 and m2 respectively. Now let us compare Coulomb's law with Newton's law of gravitation. In particular, the gravitational force between the particle 1 and particle 2 is given by fg equal to minus of g times m1 times m2 over r square times r cap. Let us now compare Coulomb's law and Newton's law of gravitation. Here, the electrostatic force is represented by Fe vector. On the other hand, gravitational force is represented by the vector Fg. The term 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught is known as the electrostatic coupling constant. Similarly, the term capital G is known as the gravitational constant or the Newton's constant of gravitation, which is also the gravitational coupling constant. The coupling constant means that if the value of this constant was zero, then two masses will not gravitationally attract each other. Same applies also for the electrostatic coupling constant. The Q1 and Q2 are the electric charges corresponding to these two particles. Now you can ask the question, what are this term m1 and m2 that appear in the Newton's law of gravitation? Now by comparing with Coulomb's law, we should conclude the term m1 and m2 represent the so-called gravitational charge of these two particles or, or we can also say gravitational mass of these two particles m1 and m2. Clearly, electric charge is a measure of strength of electrostatic attraction or repulsion that a charge can generate. Similarly, gravitational mass or gravitational charge is a measure of strength of gravitational attraction. To contrast gravitational mass or the gravitational charge with the inertial mass that we discussed a little earlier, inertial mass was the property of heaviness, how difficult a body is it to move. On the other hand, gravitational mass represents the attractive power of a given object. In order to understand the role of inertial mass and the gravitational mass, let us consider the acceleration of a charged particle due to the electric field. 
Let us consider a particle with charge Q1 and inertial mass M1i. Then using Newton's second law, we can find the resultant acceleration of a charged particle in an electric field is given by A1 vector equal to Q1 by M1i times electric field E. If you have another particle with charge Q2 and inertial mass M2i, then the resultant acceleration is given by A2 equal to Q2 over M2i times the electric field E. In general, A1 is not equal to A2 as it depends on the ratio electrical charge over inertial mass. Let us now consider the acceleration of a given particle due to gravity. We can find the gravitational field due to a particle of gravitational mass capital M is given by little g vector equal to minus of g times capital M over R square times the unit vector along the R, R cap. Now for the particle 1 using Newton's second law we can find the resultant acceleration as you see it here. Expression of A1 is given by M1g over M1i times the gravitational field g. Similarly for particle 2 we can express the resultant acceleration as a2 equal to m2g over m2i times the gravitational field g. Clearly acceleration due to gravity as like in the case of electrostatic force depends on the ratio gravitational charge over inertial mass or gravitational mass mg over inertial mass mi. Now we shall ask a question. For a given particle of inertial mass mi, we can add some more extra electrical charge q to increase the charge of a particle. Similarly, we can ask, is it possible to add some extra gravitational charge or gravitational mass to a particle without affecting its inertial mass? Or more precisely, is mg of a given particle is same as the mass inertial mi. The answer to this question was sought by Newton himself. However, most accurate experimental demonstration was carried out by Etvos in 1885, where he demonstrated experimentally using two different types of materials that the difference between gravitational mass and inertial mass when normalized appropriately, as you see it here, is less than or equal to 10 to the power minus 9. The current measurement has decreased this limit further. So the current upper bound on the difference between the gravitational mass and the inertial mass in the normalized way is less than 10 to the power minus 13. However, experiment can never establish the equivalence of gravitational mass with absolute precision. Therefore, we need to assume something or we need to make an axiom. This assumption is known as the weak equivalence principle, which says that gravitational mass mg and inertial mass mi are equal for all objects that is mg equal to mi so this is an axiom we assume this is true experiment tells us they are very close to each other now let us revisit the acceleration due to gravity we can write down the newton's second law under the influence of gravitational force as you see it here now we can express the resultant acceleration A as minus of mg over mi times g times capital Mg over R square times R cap. Weak equivalence principle tells us that mg is equal to mi 
This reduces the expression of acceleration due to gravity to be A equal to minus capital G times M G over R square times R cap. Importantly, this also implies the motion of a particle under the influence of gravity does not depend on the mass of the particle. I hope you have enjoyed today's session. In case you have a question, comments or a suggestion, please feel free to write them below in the comment section. And if you would like to follow the physics discussion here, then you are welcome to subscribe to this channel.